What's up guys, it's Doll Matter here, and today we're going to be reacting to another Seth Zentach video. So this one we got Fantastic, I can't speak apparently, I can't read, Fantastic Dizzy Review Yoked Edition. So I, I've never heard of this game, we're back to the niche games that no one's ever heard of that Seth's doing reviews on. Anyway, link to the original video down below, let's jump into it. Hey, hey people. Oh, well, Seth here. To address some allegations, I'd like to ask a simple question. Are you really upset because I was on the flight logs? Or are you upset <laughs> because you were never invited? <laughs> game, which, unlike the highly optimized projects of today, is less than 800 kilobytes and fits on a floppy with room to spare. Oh, thank God, man. That, that drives me nuts. Anytime I see a game, like I, I have Hubble Bundle, so I have a ton of games in my Steam library. And every once in a while, I'll be like, oh, I, want, I should play that. And then I go look at how the download size, and it's like 100 gigs. And I'm just like, you know what? I'm not going to play that. It's a DOS game, so we play it on DOS Box. It's a oh tale God. older than time. You are an egg called Dizzy, and your egg girlfriend has been kidnapped. Save her before she gets groomed by the vaguely Arabic-looking wizard. A lot of <laughs> puzzles by using the right item. You can only hold three, and the only way to reshuffle them is by dropping them on the ground. It's a simple system, but it's an adventure game, so everything is really an insane leap cool. of logic. Deadly spikes, Persian rug, burning fireplace, bucket of water, which looks exactly the same as the M bucket of water but has to be dropped into a specific pool of water to become the bucket of water <laughs> or else it doesn't work and you have to backtrack all the way to the graveyard also because you're an egg you roll like an egg this can filter a lot of people as you'll roll into enemies the yolk folk village is infested by spiders and snails while the city is overrun by shape-shifting hasidics but none of this <laughs> As as the butterflies, which do no damage, but stun lock you long enough that you die by something else. As evidenced by the fact that he is healed not only by eating fruit, but by the mere presence of precious stones, Dizzy is a Semitic life form. And Grandpa Dizzy oh, is probably some kind of century egg, which explains why he has to live in hiding out of fear. Isn't Seth Jewish too? The amount of Jew jokes he makes in his videos is like, I'm pretty sure he's Jewish. Or is that just another one of his jokes? I, I honestly don't know of becoming an Asian man's delicacy. The objective <laughs> of this game is to collect 250 stars that lag your screen each time they appear. This is the intended experience as increasing your CPU cycles will make the extra life mini game impossible as the hourglass is tied to your clock speed. These stars are <laughs> non-negotiable and you can't finish the game without them. Some are sadistically placed and you can't get to them except by falling in a particular manner from several screens away, let alone know of their existence. At some point, the game even expects you to trick shot yourself against butterflies to get the final stars while platforming on a series of clouds that sink the longer you put weight on them. But that's late game. Early game is getting filtered by the minecart. Honestly, that's actually pretty cool. The fact that they go, like, that they make it, like, the, the skill ceiling that high that, like, to even beat the game, you have to be doing, like, fucking trick shots and, like, that's wild. That's actually pretty cool. Which boils down to a single strategy guessing you guessed wrong you get splatted or in my case you take the wrong exit and get stuck on a beach at the time i didn't realize you could take the entrance back to the mine and drowned in the ocean then i came <laughs> after the bubble riding mini game and got filtered all over again because i brought my aqualung but no flippers and i couldn't swim out of the bottom cavern dizzy has taught me that i haven't progressed very much as an adult and i'm struggling <laughs> with an hour-long video game that's old enough to be the child bride that died giving birth to me at least the music is nice <laughs> What the fuck? Okay, how old is this game? I mean, if it's on DOS, it's got to be fantastic. Dizzy. It's got to be pretty old. 1991. It's actually n more recent than I thought it would be being on DOS. In general, this is a very nice game that you could show your grandma. It's not some NTR RPG maker slop that would surely break her pacemaker. In the <laughs> fight the wizard. He's not very good at magic, but he has a mirror, which is good at reflecting magic. He's turned to stone and dies, presumably as an involuntary celibate. <laughs> your reward is a kiss from your fair maiden, which I think is reward enough. Recently, I had an epiphany. I cover many games where I have a script, I have footage, but it's not long enough to justify a full video. Then I realized the title of the 
video doesn't have to be accurate. So I have no lack of content, which is important when I'm committed to giving sponsors the lowest quality for the highest rate of return. There are <laughs> things I value in this life. My mother, my data, and your mother. You know who else loves these things? <laughs> data brokers. Remember, everything you do online can be traced directly to your IP address via your service provider. But they wouldn't sell your personal information to governments and private companies just for a quick buck. Oh, yes, would they? they would. <laughs> data brokers use this information to people. They don't even sell it to the government. They just give it to them. Piece together what kind of person you are and sell you ads. Just last week, I googled one C++ tutorial. I now own six pairs of programming socks. I don't even know how it happened. Such is the horror of a dreaded data broker. How did they know it was me? Because in one brief moment of foolish weakness, I forgot to turn on ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN masks your digital footprint and stops those pesky brokers in their tracks. And it's not just brokers you gotta look out for. Ask yourself this. Who owns the Wi-Fi you use to browse all your favorite content? Is it your mom? My mom? Your boss? Perhaps your <laughs> local public library. Well, if you and your waifu keep having these not-so-secret rendezvous on their Wi-Fi, they can still see everything, <laughs> even Hansen. in incognito mode. Now, your mother will disown you, your boss will garnish your wages, and the library will revoke your card. Now, your <laughs> JoJo library date is canceled. But Seth, I hear you cry. All this computational back and forth sounds really complicated. Not to worry, my friend. ExpressVPN does all the hard work for you. Just turn it on, hit one button, and voila. All your network traffic is sent through a secure encrypted tunnel. How strong? So strong it would take a supercomputer. Wait, didn't he say NordVPN earlier in this ad? Is he doing two VPN ads at once? <laughs> I wouldn't even put it. I don't know if he fucked up there, or if I, maybe I misheard. Maybe he fucked up, or I honestly wouldn't put put it past Seth to do two VPN ads in one video. One billion years to crack. Find out how you can get free months of ExpressVPN for free by visiting expressvpn.com forward slash Seth or by clicking the link in the description below. What if I told you an action RPG released 2005 that's over 19 years old had fully working multiplayer? Until recently, when some corporate goon came in and ordered the unpaid intern to manually disable the multiplayer button. That's not a joke. They're just that petty. The latest copy <laughs> of Dungeon Siege 2 on Steam presents you with a menu where the multiplayer is grayed out. So, naturally, people reverse engineered it and it's working perfectly. We managed to finish the whole campaign using only the most premium gaming platform. It's old, <laughs> it's scuffed, and it plays adverts that can be blocked by editing your System32 host file. But guess what? It has charm. This game infects my consciousness. Ah, I kill you first, green lady! There's quotes from a tutorial burned into my brain. Those must be the bracken we learned about as children! Let's take them out! These bracken are as weak as Calrathian ale! These creatures remind me of our scuffles with the Taklat! <laughs> These creatures are weak to fire! Too bad I'm not a combat mage! These Ketril are tough! Next time we see one, use my brutal attack power on it. That'll surprise him. The story is very simple. You and your friend Drevin enlist in PMC Wagner. Before dying, he gets <laughs> his magical plot armor amulet. We have completed our task. When can we expect our pay? Look out! And then he dies. The rest doesn't really matter. You don't have to pay attention. Just kill things and have a good time. Oh my lord, I don't care. Wait, An age ago. Wait, do Zerum I skipped Don't it. Care. Anyway, we get captured as war criminals because we attacked a UNESCO heritage site. Understandably, the Dryads don't like us, and they've put good boy compliance callers on all the prisoners. One of them makes a break for it, which isn't very smart. On the other hand, you did enlist as a mercenary for people who look like this. They say, don't judge a book by its cover. I say, physicality reflects inner state, and all the most horrible people I've ever encountered look like something that escaped the minds of Moria. The prison warden gives you a chance to prove yourself by burning down a bunch of of Morden Watchtowers. This is one of several situations in this game where you have to think. Don't worry, there's not many. There's also not much dialogue in this game, <laughs> except for Daru. Daru never stops talking, and she will begin her monologue in the middle of a fight. For this reason, I always recommend putting Daru in your party, because it's very entertaining to get wiped by a dialogue box. This game is quite intense. <laughs> I'm not kidding when I say it's about one, two taps and you're dead. Free if you're a tank, and even a trash mob encounter can leave your party dead. Man, honestly, old school RPGs were always so crazy difficult. Like, it, it, it it's kind of funny because like if you look at like really old RPGs are like fairly easy, and then the difficulty just like ramps up until I would say like the mid '90s when they became like one of the more mainstream genres for a while there, 
And then the difficulty goes down, and then it kind of ramps up again in the 2000s, like the early 2000s, and then it kind of like goes down, right? It's, it's weird that like the, the average difficulty of RPGs kind of like sways, but there's like certain time periods where like the RPG difficulty is just like through the roof. Like early MMOs are insanely grindy and difficult. Like it, it's, I don't know why, but I, I guess it's just the, the sadism of the players, I guess. I'm going to be real. This, Seth uh, Slatina. So it's important to have a plan, build, or idea of what you're doing, which we did not. You level up by doing damage of a particular affinity, melee, ranged, combat, or nature magic. And you can mix and match freely. Don't like your mage? Pick up a sword. Don't like your fighter? Take a bow. There's nothing stopping you from leveling every single tree except free time and practicality. And there's no... Man, honestly, I wish somebody would release an MMO like this. Like, one of the... Th I want something like RuneScape and WoW mixed together where you have all these skills and you can learn them all in one character if you're willing to put in the time, but then, like, a more modern, like, WoW-ish style game. And not, not like, yeah. Because WoW, you, have to, you, you know, you pick your class, you pick your race, you pick, you know, uh, your two professions. I want, like, the, the RuneScape-style professions, but on, like, a World of Warcraft-style game. No limitation on what any of your characters can be. Did my friend have to relevel Tar as a combat mage? No, but it's funny. The Broken Worlds expansion adds two hybrid classes, Fist of Stone and Blood Assassin. One of these sucks ass. The other one lets nature mages have more armor than the tank. If you find yourself dying, just get more armor. Mm -hmm. There is no other statistic that matters for the average player. Leveling and affinity lets you put skill points in that tree and certain combinations unlock powers. Powers win fights. Everything else is irrelevant. It's just filler until you use powers again. You charge them up by doing damage, and you release them when you want dopamine. The first difficulty curve is taking the elevator, as you will likely split your party in half, and then one of us is going to pull the lever again, and we're going to repeat the whole process. Mm -hmm. It's not your fault. Uh, Are no! you fucking kidding me? <laughs> no, wait, don't worry. Okay, get off. Yeah, get off the fucking... What, what am I? <laughs> ah, he went on the other one. This game is entirely about budgeting because the main thing you spend money on is potions and you must make an informed decision. Do I buy the regular potion for my level that heals fast for however much money or the weakest, shittiest potion for 15 gold? The answer is always the shittiest potion. <laughs> and then you fill every single tile of your inventory with health and mana potions. Quick spoiler, melee and ranged do damage. Nature and combat do the same damage at the same rate, but they cost mana. So if you're relying on magic for damage, go back. Don't do that. Also, do not ever try to all. Well, they said that something is like weak to fire, right? So I'm guessing resistances are a thing in this game, or is that just some random fucking talking point that doesn't actually affect anything? And the, the NPC is just going off about nonsense have this game. It can't handle it, and you're gonna lose your save. However, I have room temperature IQ, and I'm conditioned like a Pavlovian dog, that each time I hear that Discord notification, I am compelled to tab out <laughs> and ruin everything. <laughs> the story, you get told that you have the plague, and you should probably seek treatment from an elvish shrine. This does nothing, because the plague is actually caused by shard souls, which are the spirits of aborted NBA players. <laughs> the Planned Parenthood. No one can see them except for your party, and you're already immune because of Draven's amulet. With nothing left to do, we take the road home. Along the way, we meet an old man who is definitely not the game's antagonist. He tells us we need to stop Doomsday by reforging the exact thing responsible for Doomsday and bringing it directly to the enemy leader. This is why we don't pay attention to the plot, the lore, or any kind of writing in this game. This is hacking. I mean, that's basically just the, like the Lord of the Rings plot, to be honest, hey, uh, minus the reforging part. Hey, we have this very powerful ring. Uh, we need to take it to the, you know, the one place that he wants it. Except, I mean, I guess technically he doesn't want it in the volcano, but you gotta take it, like, right to fucking Mount Doom. And slash, this is ADHD in its purest form since we gave up being hunter-gatherers. Anyway, we, we purify black and force all the shard souls out of their host bodies. Finding nothing else, they all dash into a snake, and we get our first boss fight, which is enjoyable because it's all downhill from here. <laughs> around a bunch because, honestly, this game is defined by its boss fights. Everything in between is relatively straightforward and not worth mentioning. The next boss fight is a dark wizard. If these are mortal men that have forsaken humanity by adding extra jaws to the side of their face. <laughs> I was going to joke about this, but as I wrote the words Sloppenheimer in my script document, <laughs> I felt deeply disgusted with myself and took a cold shower. It took us 
over an hour to kill him. This is easily the place where most people get filtered because every one of his attacks will one-shot you and one of them doesn't even have a projectile. It's just hit scan and you're dead. You have to break down oh, each part be of his so shield barrier to actually damage him and then he can just recast it. And once you get him down to one third of his health, he starts summoning his crystal. This is a DPS check that you have to save all your powers for and focus the moment it goes up because if you don't, it kills everyone in the map regardless of distance. And after this <laughs> you have approximately five seconds before he summons another next up is a that would be so irritating ballista while avoiding hordes of infinitely spawning crabs if he goes in the air he rains down fire that burns you the crabs and more importantly the ballista this temporarily overheats the controls however the fight glitched and the ballista was now permanently disabled half an hour into this I wasn't planning on reloading the game. I gambled on the idea that I could reset the object state by getting the dragon to cook the controls. And it turned out that worked exactly as planned. <laughs> this is a two-stage boss fight, and now we have to fight his bloodied head in a narrow hallway with no cover. Objectively, <laughs> we have been filtered. And yet, with everyone lying unconscious on the floor, we killed the dragon. How? <laughs> because for some reason, his second phase never actually kills you. And my nature mage, who was knocked out on the floor getting cooked by fireballs, was wearing a single piece of clothing with damage reflect that chunked the dragon's health for each tick of damage. Essentially, he died to a pair of slippers. What can I even say? That is fucking hilarious. Oh, I hit the wrong one. That is fucking hilarious. That, the accidental cheese. We almost lost the first phase to a glitch, and we won the second with an exploit. A pleasant surprise, <laughs> but usually it gets better before it gets worse. And we're no longer heading downhill because we've reached the bottom. Misery has two definitions, borderline personality and fighting free dark wizards at the same time. Oh, man, this is gonna be rough. Okay, never mind, it's over. I don't know if I can describe the incomprehensible pain of childbirth in a retarded position where you're fighting gravity, but I'll try describing something much worse. Imagine giving a boss the ability to cast a delayed explosion at your character's feet. Now make it spammable and make it affect everyone on screen. And if your characters are already dead, target them anyway. The problem of this fight isn't the free bosses spamming insta-kill area of effect attacks. The problem is that the animation to get up from being dead is longer than the animation that kills you. So that if you die in this fight, I cannot revive you because the second I do, you get one shot. <laughs> billion instant projectile beams that can clip an entire party. This that fight would be so irritating. Us. It broke the whole game. It went on for so long that eventually the game started to randomly pause on pause and desynchronize. Spells and AoE attacks stop rendering and eventually Everything just grinded to a halt and crashed. So we rage quit the game for a week. And then we got them on a second try in only half a time. I'm convinced most of my subconscious psyche was dedicated to training for the rematch. and strategy, but I didn't know I had. But I've, I've seen that video before. The, the funny is that they like tried dipping it in the water and then Buddy just comes up with the towel and cuts off the oxygen. You can take out just one of them. The entire fight becomes much more tolerable. The last fight of the game is pretty okay. I don't expect you to have any trouble. You have to kill Valdis, who is normally invincible. However, this fight takes place in Baoshan Steel Limited, and the lack of workplace safety can work to your advantage. You got it. Thank God. I was gonna kill myself if I rage quit. Then we <laughs> tried the Broken World expansion. I know all this. I'm not some child. Concentrate. Who... <laughs> what the fuck you is must that? focus if you want to learn. Dude, this sucks. And uh, <laughs> spoiler, it's complete dog shit. Turns out there's a good reason it's not sold anywhere online. Skip that shit. There's nothing good about it. In summary, <laughs> nine, <laughs> Dungeon Siege 2. it will test your friendship, and it will either wither away into ash because you are not pure of heart, or cement and grow stronger. Because <laughs> one day you will play a competitive MOBA together, and if you're not prepared for that, you're gonna be calling each other ethnic slurs for the last time because <laughs> is over you can play with up to four players it's incredibly fun i'll try include instructions on how to patch the game in the description below but in case this is not accurate skill issue figure it out as always more content to come so stay tuned i've been reading a lot of comments saying lol seth isn't uploading he's busy digging tunnels under the synagogue these jokes hurt my feelings and cause me to self-harm a warm thanks to the many members of a merchant's guild generously funding and bankrolling these videos you're all truly wonderful <laughs> have a good one yeah I, I, so uh, is he actually jewish like he, he makes a ton of jewish jokes he jokes about being jewish but i'm not sure if he's actually jewish or if he's just fucking around but 
Anyway, let me know what you think below. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one.